this webcast makes the point that atomic orbital com combinations that are mismatched in energy result in polar covalent bonds. For the energy matched case, the atomic orbitals contribute equally to both the bonding molecular orbital and they contribute equally to the anti-bonding molecular orbital. In the case of the energy mismatched example, the atomic orbital that's lower in energy pr contributes predominantly to the bonding molecular orbital, and the atomic orbital that's higher in energy contributes predominantly to the anti-bonding molecular orbital. There is disproportionate contributions of those atomic orbitals to the resulting molecular orbitals, and that's where the polar covalent nature of the bond will result. This simply means that as the energy gap between those two atomic orbitals widens, the contribution of the atomic orbital psi 1 to the bonding molecular orbital, capital Psi 1, is going to increase, and the contribution from that higher energy, atomic orbital Psi 2, to the anti-bonding orbital, capital Psi 2, is going to increase. Let's put these ideas into practice by comparing the non-polar carbon-carbon bond found in ethane to the polar covalent bond, the carbon-fluorine bond, found in CH3F. We can use our hybrid atomic orbitals to make these two covalent bonds. And let's begin with the carbon-carbon bond. We can place those sp3 hybrid orbitals three quarters of the way up from the 2s level. We can combine those two sp3 orbitals together. They're going to make a bonding and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. We can add electrons to those hybrid atomic orbitals. And when we do that, the pair of hybrid atomic orbitals that come together results in a bonding pair of electrons. Since the molecular orbital is derived from atomic orbitals of equal energy, those resulting molecular orbitals will be symmetrical in shape. Not only are they symmetrical in shape along their symmetry axis, the cylindrical symmetry axis, but each of the two halves, the left half and the right half, are of equal size because each of the sp3 carbon atoms contribute equally to those molecular orbitals for both the bonding and the anti-bonding case. What about in the case of the carbon-fluorine bond? In the case of the carbon-fluorine bond, the energies are lower in fluorine than they are in carbon. You can see that the sp3 hybrid levels for fluorine are quite a bit lower than the sp3 hybrid orbitals for carbon. And a consequence of that is that there's going to be energy mismatch, and the energy mismatch will result in a smaller amount of stabilization for the bonding orbital. That's a smaller amount compared to the energy matched case, where we had that very large amount of stabilization. And likewise, the amount of destabilization is going to be smaller compared to the very large amount of destabilization that we had in the energy matched case for the carbon-carbon bond. A consequence of this lower energy is that we have a low-lying anti-bonding orbital. And we've already learned that anti-bonding orbitals, the lowest energy anti-bonding orbital, is going to be the electrophilic site in a molecule. The lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is the LUMO, and the lower the LUMO, the more accessible that empty orbital is to a nucleophile. So the drop in energy is going to make carbon fluorine a better electrophile than carbon carbon bond. We can also take a look at the orbitals that result, and we'll see that while they're still going to have cylindrical symmetry, they're going to have a disproportionate shape. The lower energy sp3 fluorine atomic orbital is going to contribute predominantly to the bonding orbital, the higher energy sp3 carbon atomic orbital is going to contribute predominantly to sigma star. The result of that is that the shapes are skewed in favor of which atom contributes greatest to that molecular orbital. The bonding molecular orbital has a disproportionate shape skewed toward the side of fluorine. Those electrons and their corresponding electron density is going to be drawn over toward fluorine. And that's the result of the low-lying energies of that sp3 atomic fluorine orbital. Now we see that the electronegativity actually stems from the low-lying energy of the fluorine atomic orbital. The higher energy, sp3 carbon atomic orbital, contributes predominantly to the antibonding orbital, and we can see that the antibonding shape is skewed 
with its greatest contribution on carbon. And, and so this makes that electrophile having its greatest contribution located on the back side of the carbon atom. And that is, in fact, why in SN2 reactions, where the electrophile is the polar, say, carbon X bond, in this case fluorine, why the attack is going to take place from the back side. The nucleophile is trying to find the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. It's this sigma star orbital, and it finds the greatest contribution on the back side of the nonpolar, the less polar atom, the carbon atom.